consciousness operates on levels of vibration that cannot directly interact with the band of frequency we call the human world. Consciousness, awareness, in its prime state could not pick up objects or sit in a chair, just as two radio stations on different wavelengths cannot connect. We therefore experience human reality through a vehicle called a body, which does match the frequency band of human reality and can interact with it. More than that, the five senses and systems of the body decode information from the fields, the simulation field overwhelmingly in this case, and produce the experienced illusion of a physical world. Or at least that's how it operates on one level. I'll be going very much deeper later on. Everything in our human reality is wave field information that connects with the fields, which encompass all other fields. Our bodies are information fields, and so is everything you think you see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. The five senses decode frequencies of information in the waveform fields through the antenna we call eyes, ears, skin, nose, and tongue and transforms them into electrical signals which are communicated to the brain. This, in turn, decodes the electrical information into digital and holographic information that we experience as a physical external world when there is no external world as we perceive it. A computer decodes information from Wi-Fi into the form that we see on the screen and the text and images we are observing are inside the computer in the same way that perceived physical reality is inside us. Different areas of the brain decode those signals into the perception of sight, sound, touch, smell and taste to construct the sense of reality that we experience as an external world when, in that form, so-called physicality, it only exists in our head. Even our head is a misnomer. Given that brain and body are also waveform information fields that we decode into apparent physical reality, and I shall put this in a wider context in due course, we may perceive the world as physical, but all is an expression of decoded waveform information. I have told the story in some previous books described by Michael Tolbert in The Holographic Universe, in which a stage hypnotist was performing at a private party. A man called Tom was put in a hypnotic trance and told that when he woke up, he would not be able to see his daughter. The hypnotist guided the daughter to stand right in front of her sitting father, so he was looking directly into her belly. Tom was asked if he could see his daughter in the room. He looked around and said no, while his daughter was inches away. The hypnotist put his hand in the small of her back and asked Tom what he was holding. A watch, he said, while his daughter stood between him and the watch. He was asked to read an inscription on the watch, which he did. To normal reality, what I have just described is impossible, but in fact it can be explained so simply. As with everything in our reality, the daughter's body was a waveform field of information operating outside of visible light. It was beyond her father's sight senses. For him to see her, he had to decode her field into a holographic form operating within visible light. The hypnotic suggestion that Tom would not be able to see his daughter firewalled his brain not to decode her field. In his reality, she remained in waveform, and so not only was he unable to see her, she could not block his view within holographic reality of the watch. Once you grasp the real nature of reality, the impossible becomes possible, and the paranormal becomes simply explainable. We even decode our own bodies into the appearance that we see. Body-mind, with its five senses, 
decodes information from the simulation into the world we think we're living in. When it's all a decoded illusion. As the Morpheus character said in the movie, The Matrix, what is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. The body is an information field decoded into physical illusion by the information field we call the brain. But there is another level of this that I will come to later. Robert Lancer, an American medical doctor and scientist, describes how a candle flame is emitting tiny packets of electromagnetic energy called photons, each pulsing electrically and magnetically. We only see the flame that we recognize when the brain decodes that energetic information into a holographic state. Lanza writes in his excellent book, Biocentrism. It is easy to recall from everyday experience that neither electricity nor magnetism have visual properties. So on its own, it's not hard to grasp that there is nothing inherently visual, nothing bright or colored about the candle flame. Now let these same invisible electromagnetic waves strike a human retina. And if, and only if, the waves happen to measure between 400 and 700 nanometers in length from crest to crest, then their energy is just right to deliver a stimulus to the 8 million cone-shaped cells in the retina. Each in turn send an electrical pulse to a neighbor neuron and on up the line this goes at 250 mepros until it reaches the warm, wet occipital lobe of the brain in the back of the head. There, a cascading complex of neurons fire from the incoming stimuli and we subjectively perceive this experience as a yellow brightness occurring in a place we have been conditioned to call the external world. The same principle applies to color, which is also a vibration interpreted by your brain. Every color and shade of color is a different frequency. Something appears to have a certain color or colors because it reflects some light frequencies, which we decode and therefore see, and absorbs the rest, which we don't decode and therefore don't see. Black absorbs all light, so it's black. White reflects all light, so it's white. And different colors absorb some light frequencies and reflect others. Scientist Isaac Newton called the frequency band of rainbow colors a spectrum. And this is appropriate when the word originates with the Latin for apparition or phantom. Specter has the same etymological source. Where are all the colors that you see? In your head, the human decoding system. It's the only place they exist.